Hello everyone and welcome back to this video series on how to make an aircraft in Autodesk Fusion 360. So before we dive into the video, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's liked, commented and subscribed. And especially those of you who have left such heartfelt messages and who've personally messaged to me as well. It really helps to know that these tutorials are helpful to you. Um, it gives me an additional boost of motivation to make sure that these tutorials are going great. Awesome. So if you've made it this far, I just want to say congratulations to you because we're pretty much done with the most difficult part of this tutorial. And that was to actually set up, make the fuselage and make the wings. And once you knew how to model the wings, making the horizontal and vertical stabilizer were pretty straightforward extension from there. Now, everything that we're gonna do from now onwards, sure, some people may consider it optional. In my opinion, it's something that should be done. Um, if you've already put in so much effort in making this CAD, I think you should add a little bit more detail and um, it is, it's just worth it in my opinion. But again, the question comes down to how much detail do you want to go into? If you're doing this for visual purposes, I highly recommend continuing with this tutorial. If you're doing this purely for simulation purposes and you have your main surfaces complete, you can go ahead and start your simulations now. Um, but you know, again, in my opinion, when I do simulations with these things as well, uh, just putting in that little extra effort, um, even if you're just doing this for a poster or a presentation, really, really does have a big effect on the people who see it. Okay, so let's get started. Now, in this specific tutorial, we are going to be focusing on the details of the fuselage. So that means working on the cockpit section, the windows and the doors. And again, it's a straightforward extension if you want to work on the cargo doors as well. Again, I'm just gonna make sure that everything is in orthographic view here. Okay, and before I actually dive into making the details of the fuselage, I'm going to convert all of these bodies into components. And you'll see in a bit why that might be a good idea. So on the main folder tree, I'm going to right click and click on new component. And I'm gonna call this one the fuselage. And you'll see that everything on the screen sort of disappeared. Uh, and this is because none of the bodies that you see on the screen belong to the active component. So when you create a new component in Fusion, it automatically activates that. Now, what I want to do is I want to drag the three fuselage bodies that I created in the, f in the second tutorial, and I'm going to drag them into this fuselage component. And you'll see that now these bodies are visible on the screen. I'm gonna repeat the process for the wings. So I'm gonna click on wings here. And I'm going to take my two wing bodies, so the wing main and the wing tip, and I'm going to place them in my wing folder. Again, I'm going to right click on the top, new component, and I'm going to call this H stabilizer. And I'm going to place both my stable, uh, H stabilizer bodies into this H stabilizer component. Right click again, new component, and I'm going to call this V stabilizer. And again, I'm just going to drag these two bodies and place them here. Now you'll see that by the end of it, you have your V stabilizer activated and therefore you can only see the V stabilizer that is active. To make sure that everything is, to make sure everything is activated, just go back to the main, um, the name on the top and then click on activate component there. So once you hover over it, you'll see the circle, click on the circle, everything gets activated. Now, because we are focusing only on the fuselage uh, details here, I am going to go ahead and click on activate fuselage component. What this does is essentially everything we do from now on, so creating a sketch, extruding, creating new bodies, they will automatically be placed under the fuselage component instead of the main 737. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is focus on the cockpit. Okay, so once you have activated your fuselage, so that means everything else sort of disappears. And if it makes your life a little bit easy, what you could do is just hide the wing um, and the horizontal and the vertical stabilizers. And now this way, all you can see is the fuselage. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is focus on the cockpit. And what I'm going to do is create a sketch on the right plane. And again, in this case, because we drew everything symmetrically, our right plane is the plane of symmetry for this aircraft. Okay, and then we wanna zoom in to where we can see the cockpit. Again, if you um, are having trouble seeing the blueprint, what you can do is just hide your bodies inside the fuselage component. Don't hide the fuselage component itself, but just hide the bodies inside the fuselage component. That way you can see the blueprints very well. Okay, so let's just trace out the cockpit windows. So first I'm gonna focus on this one over here and I'm just gonna draw a pretty rough um, 
drawing there first, and then we will refine this drawing. So I'm going to press T on my keyboard to trim this and this. And that looks pretty good. I'm just going to add a fillet to that side, that side, and that side. And you can see that it's too rounded, and I personally like it when it's a little bit sharp, so it's only got very minimal um, um, uh, rounds. And then I am going to also add a fillet here, and you can see I don't want that to be that sharp. If I just zoom in, it's going to let me increment it to a smaller amount. So maybe I just want to do maybe something like that. Okay, lovely. Now let's focus on the second one. Again, I'm just going to draw something from somewhere from there to there, from there to there, there to there, and somewhere from there to there. Okay, again, I'm going to press T on my keyboard to trim this tool, this one, and this one. And I'm going to repeat the process by adding a fillet there, maybe. Press Enter, and we can add different sized fillets on these corners. So over here, maybe I want something bigger. And you can see that Fusion already does a pretty good job in estimating what, um, how much curvature we want to add. Again, instead of making this 100, maybe I'm going to try 75, uh, maybe even 50. Okay, so I personally like that a little bit more, so I'm going to keep it to that. Again, this is completely your preference. Yeah, but obviously if you have your own aircraft design and you know the actual sizes of the windows, then go ahead and uh, trace those out here now. Okay, and finally, I'm going to draw one from here to here, and from there to there, and from there to somewhere there. Again, I'm just going to press T on my keyboard, press that, choose the fillet tool, and decrease that there, and also somewhere here. Awesome. So now if we bring back the bodies, you can see that we've basically created the side profile of our cockpit windows. And making sure that your fuselage component is the only component that's activated, we're now going to split the fuselage body into our uh, cockpit windows. So I'm going to press Finish Sketch, and I'm going to go to Split Body, and the body that we want to split is the main fuselage. And the splitting tool, which is the knife, is, are going to be our sketches. So Fusion, unfortunately, does not allow us to select multiple knives or multiple splitting tools at once. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on one of them at a time. And you can see what it's doing is it's taking that profile and it's basically extending it to reach the outside of our fuselage. And now if I press OK, you'll see that it will create a new body out of the main body of our fuselage. So if I just highlight this, you'll see that the fuselage main is selected. And Fusion's a bit weird like that. It sort of, um, it takes the new body and it takes the name of the main body. It's a bit confusing, but we're gonna change that in a bit. So if I hide the fuselage main, you can see that this new body that is now a fuselage main one is the entire fuselage without that specific body. Okay, so if I'm just going to bring this back, and now you can see everything here again. Again, it still looks a bit weird, but don't worry, it's going to look much better in a bit. Now, obviously, um, as soon as you're done with um, your sketch, Fusion automatically just hides it, but we're not done with our sketch yet, so we're going to bring it back by pressing that I icon over there. And again, I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to say split body, and this is the body that I want to split, and the splitting tool can be the second one. And press OK. And you'll see it did something similar again. It took the main name for the smaller body and it and it gave it uh, and it gave the main body a new name okay but not to worry again we're just going to change that in a bit okay so one potential problem i can see here is that our sketch is actually also going into the nose of the fuselage so let's see what happens when we repeat the process here so this is the body we want to select and the splitting tool is going to be this if i press ok it did actually split the body, but you can see that if I go to the front, you'll see that this looks a bit weird, and this is not how actually aircraft look. So there are two things that we can do at this point. One of them is to actually combine the nose with the main fuselage, and then split it. And what this will do is it'll form a much smoother curve over here. But what I'm going to do instead, is, instead of combining the nose and the fuselage, I'm just going to edit this sketch. So again, Fusion's great property. You can roll back in time and edit the sketch. So in the timeline, if I go to the sketch, I'm going to double click on the sketch. 
and I'm going to take this Y again because the sketch is not constrained. I can just freely move this one around wherever I want. So I'm just going to make it somewhere there maybe. I'm going to pull this one up a little bit. Maybe somewhere there. And now our sketch is clear of the nose. So now if I press finish sketch again, you'll see that I didn't actually have to do anything. It updated the sketch automatically. And now you'll see that this is perfectly level uh, and it's still only part of the main fuselage. Okay, great. So now we're done with these sketches. I'm going to go ahead and hide the sketch. Awesome. So now you see that if you look at it from the front, it looks clean. When we look at it from the side, it also looks very clean. So now what we want to do is go to the front profile and you'll see that usually when you see an aircraft, you'll see that there are two windows instead of one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to split this one into two. Um, and what we, the way we're going to do, do that is by creating a sketch and let's create it on the front profile now. Okay. And what I want to do is project this boundary. So if I just click on P and if I have projection link there, and if I click on this, you'll see it's doing something weird because it's only selected it up until that point. And this is because when we first made the cylinder from the T-spines, in order to successfully close the curve, Fusion has one line that it draws from the, uh, from the front to the back, and that line happens to be this one that's highlighted right now. But obviously we don't want that, so what we're going to do is we're just gonna uh, deselect that again and manually trace each line. So I'm going to click on that one, that one, that one, not that dot, making sure that only the lines are selected and not the actual um, points. Okay, and then we're going to set that one, that line there, that line there, that line there, and that line there. Oops, so there's one more over there. And you'll see now that that's a closed curve, and we can go ahead and press OK. And you'll see that this is basically what it's projected. Now, what this will allow us to do is that it is a closed curve. So if I click on Offset, it's going to let me select all of this, even though I have to make manual selections. It's going to let me select all of that. And when I press, when I just drag this, in a bit, you'll see that it's basically created the same shape with a bit of offset. Um, so maybe I'm going to say about 20. And at least visually, this looks okay. And then what I want to do is take the line. And again, so drawing from the offset going up, you'll see this turquoise line. And this turquoise line means that it is vertically upwards from the origin. So I'm just going to take that and that cut it. Again, I'm going to press offset and I want to offset this middle line. And let's say that we want to go to that side by maybe 10, maybe 15. Yep, 15 looks better. And we also want to take the middle line again and do 15 in the other direction. So it's going to be minus 15 in this case. And press enter. And what you'll see it's done is it's just basically created three vertical lines for us. And the reason why we've done this will become clear in a second. So if I press T, I'm going to take that section, that section, and that section away. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the bottom. And I'm also going to remove the middle line and also this line and that line. And you'll see what we're left with is basically two drawings of a projection of the cockpit from the front view. So I'm just going to add a little fillet here, 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 and here. Um, okay, you'll see that it did something weird. So let's deselect all of that, undo all the fillet, and manually add the fillets one by one. So in this case, Maybe I want to go 25 there and 25 there. And let's see why it was doing something weird here. Okay, so it doesn't want to create a fillet here. And I'm not sure why. But let's try it on the other one. And it doesn't want to do that either. Um, okay, so what if we made this a horizontal line? And we can't do that because this is a curve. Not to worry. So. It, it doesn't matter too much in this case, so it should be fine. Now, if I press enter or finish sketch, we are going to repeat the process of creating um, a different body from this body that we already have. So split body, and in this case, the body we want to split is the front uh, cockpit section over there. And the tool that we're going to use is one of the cockpit windows and press OK. And you'll see that it did that very well. Um, Another one we want to do is repeat the process. So open up sketch two again, split body, click on that one and click on the other cockpit window. And this will create it for you. And if I hide this again, 
Now you'll see the difference between the one in the front and the one on the side is that this one sort of has a rim. Um, and you'll see that aesthetically, um, if you want to add a sort of uh, aluminum uh, color or appearance to this, you can. And if you want to do the same thing for these two, you can actually do that as well. So if we go back to sketch one and in the timeline, if we go to uh, double click on that one there and click on offset, take this one and put it down a little bit. So this would be around, we went with minus 20 last time. So let's do minus 20 in this case as well and repeat the same one for this one. So if I do minus 20, okay, 20 in this case and press enter. Awesome, so now we have the opportunity to also create rims for these windows. So if I go to split body, and this is the body I wanna split now, and the tool I want to split it with is this. And repeat the same process here. And now if I hide my sketch one, you'll see that all of these now have rims. And this now should end up looking more like a 737 than it was before. Now, if you already wanna see it look cooler, there's something we can do. So inside fuselage, if I just right click and click on new component, and I'm gonna call this component cockpit. So you'll see what it's done is it's created a new component cockpit under the fuselage component. So on the fuselage, you'll see that the icon has changed to a multi, uh, multiple components rather than just one component. And what we're gonna do is now we're gonna drag these bodies into our new cockpit component. So that's gonna be fuselage main, this one. And it's a bit difficult to select at the moment, but okay, I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna put them into my cockpit um, component. And you'll see maybe, I think I selected the wrong one there. So this can go back up. And the one we really want is this one, put it back down. And you'll see that basically what we've done is just taken the glass side of the cockpit. And if I right click on this and go to appearance, um, maybe I want a glass, so glass, color density, and I'm gonna say glass heavy color and make it black. And you'll see what this is going to do, it's gonna get, it's gonna give that dark uh, black um, sort of glossy, glossy appearance. Okay, awesome. So now if you switch your fuselage bodies back on, and activate the entire fuselage, you'll see that we've given the cockpit a bit of a glossy texture. Uh, we can repeat the process with the rims. So I am going to create a new component inside of the fuselage component, and I'm gonna call this uh, cockpit rims. Okay, and what this is gonna do is gonna create another component called cockpit rims, and let's activate the fuselage for now. I'm gonna select this one and I believe it's this one and this one, and I'm gonna drag that into cockpit rims. Um, okay, so now if I hide my few such bodies, you'll see that the rims have successfully been added to the cockpit rims. Now I'm gonna right click on cockpit rims, appearance, and I'm going to go for a more aluminum sort of light silver color. So aluminum uh, does give that effect. So I'm just gonna go for aluminum and maybe I wanna go for polish and I'm just gonna do that. And again, bringing back the few starch bodies, you'll see that this has a completely different look to it now. To make it even more distinguishable, what you could do is take these guys and add a different color to them. So if I add, for example, a paint, glossy, and let's say we wanna add a white because I like aircraft that are in white, you'll see that it gives a different look to it. Obviously it's not as distinguishable right now, but if you go to render, you'll see that in the right lighting conditions, it will be highlighted differently as you can see here. Pretty cool in my opinion. Awesome, so let's go back to design and work on the rest of the stuff. Okay, so once we're done with the cockpit, we want to now work on the windows. Now, obviously there are many ways that you can go ahead and make this window. Um, and the most intuitive way that you could think of is to actually draw one of the windows and then um, create a pattern that would draw all the windows for you and then you would manually one by one split the body with all of those windows. The problem with that is that it would take a lot of time for you to do uh, in order for you to do that. So you may remember from when we were making the cockpit, the splitting tool doesn't 
does not allow you to um, select multiple cutting tools in order to split the body. You'd have to do that one by one. And in this case, we have around 50 windows. You probably don't want to repeat that process 50 times. So I'm going to show you a different way. And the way I'm going to do is we're only going to create one, one profile of the window, split the body once, and then we're going to create a pattern out of the split along the fuselage. And you'll see this makes sense in a bit. So firstly, I'm going to create a sketch on the right side of the plane. And I'm just going to zoom into the first window over here. I'm going to draw a line from here to here, from here to here, whoops. Obviously you can directly go ahead and just make a rectangle. I'm just trying to be a little bit more accurate here. So I'm choosing this manually. Okay, I'm gonna press T to then get rid of these edges. Choose the fillet tool here, 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 and here. At this point, what you can do is compare your rectangle with the window on the right. So if I just hide the bodies on the fuselage, you can see that this is giving me um, something maybe like that. Now, obviously, I don't know the exact specifications of the 737 windows. If you think they have more curvature, go ahead and add these curvatures. If you have they have less, do it to your own preference. I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm going to press OK. OK, so we're going to do something similar now. So we're going to finish the sketch. I'm going to bring back the bodies. Split tool is going to be, um, so our body to split is going to be the main fuselage. And the splitting tool is going to be our window right there. And if I press OK, you can see that it's going to create this lovely window for us. Now, obviously, we do not want to repeat this process 50 times. So what I like to do is look at the right side first and see how many of these windows actually are equally spaced. So I'm just going to hide the bodies again. And in this case, you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of these at least appear to be equally spaced. So what I'm going to assume here is that these 15 are indeed equally spaced and we are going to create a pattern out of the split that will do the splitting automatically for us. Now, let's do this. So let's create a pattern, a rectangular pattern. And in the type, we want to select features. And the feature that we want to select is in the timeline split. And in the direction, obviously, the direction is going to be along the fuselage. And one such place is this blue line of the origin. And you'll see that it's, give us, it's given us this option to drag. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this tick mark somewhere around the center over there. It's just a little bit more. And there we go. And obviously, the quantity that we want here is going to be 15. And you'll see that I was actually a little bit wrong. These are not equally spaced 15 windows. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to assume that they are. And you'll see what's going to happen now. So if I press OK, you'll see that it automatically created these windows for me. And these are 15 equally spaced windows. Now, the problem that you can see here is that it also created these with the weirdest names possible. So again, we're not going to worry too much about this. We are actually going to place these into a new component inside the fuselage called Windows, and we won't ever have to deal with them again. So I'm just going to right click New Component, and I'm going to call these Windows. And again, you can see here that if I select all of these, it's highlighted all the windows. And my main fuselage is now actually called body 26 for some reason. Again, fusion is a bit funny with these things, but shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm just going to drag all of these bodies into windows. And if I right click on windows and go to appearance, and we already use the glass heavy color. So I'm going to drag this onto the windows component. And if I click remove there, what it's going to do is it's going to add those glossy appearance, the glossy appearance, sorry, to our windows. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on activating fuselage again. And you'll see that our main fuselage is back to our standard steel component that Fusion originally comes in stock with. Okay, so at this point, if you want to, you can go ahead and add the appearance on your main fuselage again. But my guess is that if every time we're going to split this body, it's going to go back to the steel appearance, we should probably save that for the end. So what we want to do now is basically make the rest of the windows. Um, 
And let's see how many times we have to repeat the process that we did. So instead of repeating it 50 times, we're going to repeat it a significantly lesser amount of times. So we did the first 15 windows. Then we've got one window over here in the middle. Then we've got four windows over here that are equally spaced. And then I believe these are 25 equally spaced windows. So what we're going to do is we only have to repeat this three more times. Once for this window, one for the four windows, and one for the 25 windows. So let's create a new sketch on our right plane. And again, if you know the dimensions of your windows from before, go ahead and use that. I don't remember, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to press P, and I'm going to pr project this window that we have created here. I'm going to press OK. And now I want to move, so if I just select all of this, Okay, let's hide the windows for that. And let's hide the bodies for that. So it should let me select this, but it's not going to. So instead, what we can do is instead of moving those, I'm just going to select this, press C and press V, as easy as it is. And then you can just go ahead and move it to the side. So manually moving didn't work, but if you control C and control V, it should work. Okay, I'm going to press OK here. And if I bring back the bodies, no one was harmed. If I bring back the windows, no one was harmed. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and finish sketch. And you'll see that we've created a new window right over here. Again, we're going to repeat the process. So we're going to say split body. And this is the body that we want to split. And this time, the splitting tool is going to be our one window over here. And I'm going to press OK. Perfect. Again, if you already want to, I'm just going to drag this window back into the Windows component and it autom automatically applies the glossy appearance onto this window because we placed it in that window component. Okay, we've got to do this two more times. So new sketch on the right hand side of the plane. And I'm going to press P, I'm going to project this window that we created before, press OK. And again, to make life a little bit easy just to select, I'm going to hide the bodies, I'm going to hide the windows so I can select this projected feature. I'm going to drag from right to left, press C, press V, and that's going to basically create a copy of that window. And let's go and do this here. Perfect. I think just slightly bit to the right, and that looks even better. And I'm going to press OK. OK, bring back the bodies. No one was harmed. Bring back the windows. No one was harmed. And the reason why I keep saying this is because sometimes when you project something, copy paste something, um, we might have not done it the right way and it sort of sometimes messes up the placement of certain things. But in this case, everything seems fine. So let's finish the sketch. Again, repeat the process to so split body, the main fuselage and the splitting tool is going to be our window and press OK. And before we do anything else, we can see that it has created the window there. And we are just going to create a new pattern like we did for these first 15 windows. So I'm going to create a rectangular pattern. The feature that we want to select is our latest split in the timeline. So right over there. The direction we want to select is that blue line over there. And you'll see it gives us the option to select this. And the quantity we want are four windows. So I'm going to place, you'll notice that these tick marks are basically supposed to be the middle section of each feature. So they're going to be the middle section of the window in this case. So I'm going to place the tick mark roughly at the right position of where the window should lie. And if I press OK, hopefully this should give me the correct. There we go. Fantastic. Cool. So now we've got these three bodies that we, <clears throat> that we can. So 27, 28, 29 and 30. And I'm going to drag those into my Windows component and voila. Beautiful. Again, we only have to do this one more time and we should be done for this tutorial. So again, create a sketch on the right side of the plane. And again, we're going to press P and we're going to project this window, press OK, hide the bodies, hide the windows, drag from right, right to left, control C, control V. And again, just move it over here. And press OK. Bring back the bodies, no one was harmed. Bring back the windows, no one was harmed. Okay, finish sketch. Split body, and the body to split is the main fuselage. Splitting tool is going to be our new window. Okay, and you'll see that it successfully created this window for us. And now what I'm going to do is easy, so rectangular, 
and the type is feature and the feature we want to select is the latest split that we just created. The direction is going to be that one there. And again, we're going to drag this out, making sure that the last tick mark aligns well with the last window over there. So just zooming in to make sure the increments are finer. And we know that this is going to be 25 windows. And now if I press OK, So in this case, it's taking a lot of time because it's basically recreating every split again and again and again and again for 25 times. Okay, and now um, I'm going to take body 31 to body 55 and drag that into my windows. And you'll notice by now that actually our main fuselage, which was what was cut, actually took on the latest number of the name. So you know everything before the latest one is to do with the window. I think that's just a neat little trick you will find. Okay, so we are now successfully done with all the windows. At this point, I think it's a good idea if you save your file if you haven't been doing so already, because at this point, this file now creates loads of curves and splines, and that is usually taxing for your computer. Okay, cool. So in my opinion, this is already looking really, really cool. There's one more thing I want to do before we end this tutorial, and that is make the doors. And you can pretty much make the doors the same way we made our windows. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the right plane, zoom in, and just basically draw the door over there. I'm going to press T to take away those edges and those edges as well. Press escape, add a fillet to these and we are good to go somewhere there. So 115 in my case, press enter. And now if I finish the sketch, split body, that's the body we want to split. And the splitting tool is going to be our door. Press OK. And you'll see that it's basically created that for us. Now, another thing that you can do at this point is add a rim similar to how we did for the cockpit. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. I'm gonna create a new sketch again on the right plane. I'm gonna project the door that we just created. Press OK, press O or click on that tool right there to offset. Drag this in a little bit. So again, I'm just gonna say maybe 35. Seems like a good number here press finish sketch and you'll notice that we actually created this new sketch inside the door. So the body we want to split is not the main fuselage, but is actually the door. So we want to split the door and the splitting tool is going to be the inside one over there and press OK. Cool. And now what you can do is basically apply a silver appearance to the rim and you can apply your main white body uh, or whatever color aircraft you want to your door as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, similar to what we did in the windows, I'm going to repeat this process. So I'm going to say rectangular pattern and the feature that we want to select are this one and this one. So it's the door and the rim and the direction we want to select is the blue line over there. And we drag it all the way to there. So you can see that my computer is actually starting to hang a little bit because of the amount of curves and splines that we have in this. Obviously the quantity we want are two doors because we only had one on the front and on the back and I'm gonna press okay and it does the trick for me. Now you can go ahead and repeat this process for the cargo doors as well if you want. I'm gonna leave them for now um, and also for your, um, your emergency doors, I believe they are. So these are the emergency doors right next to the windows. You can apply the same process for that as well. But um, this tutorial has gone long enough already. Now what I'm going to do instead is, um, hopefully you've been able to follow all of this. Um, and you can see it looks really, really cool, um, at least in my opinion, once you start applying more appearances to it, add your own uh, libraries and stuff, it would look even cooler. But that's it for this tutorial. And um, what I'll do is I will also upload this file onto my website, similar to what I did for the other tutorials. And hopefully you have access to it so that if you want to just use this fuselage, you can. 
um, and start modeling the wings from there. All right, guys, thank you for watching. If you like this, please do like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me to know whether these tutorials are helpful to you or not. If you have any suggestions or any different ways you would have done this, leave those in the comments as well. And uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next episode.